promised, here is a video on Lesson 2-4. It's called Special Pairs of Angles, and it's in a section called Theorems about Angles in Perpendicular Lines. So there's two lessons that go with this, and the first one is 2-4. This is a rather simple lesson. I think you'll find it easy. I wrote a lot of this out, so if you need to pause to write things down, you can do that. Also, these definitions need to go on in your notebook where you're going to keep all your theorems, postulates, and definitions. So the first definition we're going to, going to talk about today is complementary angles. And I think you've already learned these in Algebra 1. But the definition says complementary angles, and they abbreviate it like this, are two angles whose measures have the sum of 90. Each angle is called the complement of the other. So I have two examples here of complementary angles. Um, R, angle R and angle T are, you would say, are complementary. Complementary. And here's another one. Sometimes they're in a triangle. Sometimes they just um, are in an angle together. So you would say on this one, angle X, Y, W is a complement of angle W, I forgot to put the letter down here, W, Y, Z. So their complementary angles add up to 90. Supplementary angles are, are two angles whose measures have the sum of 180. Each angle is called a supplement of the other. So in this one, we have an angle of 50 and one of 130. So angle A and angle B are supplementary. Here's two that are on the same line. So we would say angle DEG is a supplement of angle GEF. So here, this is the angle. We would call the angle X. Its supplement is going to be 180 minus X. So if X is 80, then its supplement would be 100 minus 80, which would be 100. So they would add up together to be 80. I think you'll find these rather easy. So let's try an example. This is one of the harder types. This is a word problem. It says a supplement of an angle is three times as large as the complement of the angle. Find the measure of the angle. So you'll be okay if you set up a little heading like what I'm gonna do. We always let X be the measure of the angle. And then if it's a complement, we say, 90 minus x would be the complement. Now up here we showed that it was 180 minus x, so that was for a supplement. So a complement is going to be 90 minus x. And actually, um, never mind, yeah, this is going to be the complement. And we're talking about both in this problem, so we're going to need the supplement. So the supplement is 180 minus x is going to be the supplement. So anytime you have one of these kind of problems, if you need a complement, you make it 90 minus the angle. And if it's a supplement, you do 180 minus the angle. Then we just read along with the words of the sentence. And whenever we see supplement, we use this one. And whenever we see complement, we use this one. So let's read along. A supplement of the angle, so this is this one, 180 minus x, is, this is always going to be equal, three times as large as the complement. So we see complement, so we pick this one. So we're going to do 90 minus x. Find the measure of the angle. So once you get the equation, you just follow along with the words of the sentence and you just distribute it through 180 minus x equals 270 minus 3x. I'm going to add 3x to both sides, such as that. And so we're going to get, I'm going to go up here, 180 plus 2x equals 270. And then I'm just going to subtract 180 from both sides. And we get 2x equals 90, and x equals 45. So uh, they wanted us to find the angle, so we found the angle. The angle measure is 45. All right, let's move on to something called vertical angles. And I didn't write the definition. I missed it somehow. 
Um, the definition, I'm going to squeeze it up here, says that vertical angles, so we can call it vertical angles. Sometimes I put this little uh, arc through it because it can look like an L if you're not careful. Vertical angles are two angles such that the sides of one angle, I'm not going to be all fitted up here, the sides of one angle are opposite rays. Whoops, I went off the paper. Um, to the sides of the other angle. Sorry, this is so messy. Of the other angle. All right, I'm going to have to jump over somewhere else. This is just really too messy. So let me just draw a picture. I'm going to go way down here of what vertical angles look like. I guess you can probably figure it out. But here's some vertical angles. Here's a line and another line. And I can put the vertical angles would be one and three are vertical angles. So these are congruent, but we didn't get there yet, so let's not go there. Vertical angles, they're two angles. The sides of one angle are opposite rays to the sides of the other angle. So, um, and, and two and four would be vertical angles. So angle one and angle three are vertical angles. And angle two and angle four are vertical angles. There we go. Um, and the definition is, again, are two angles such that the sides of one angle are opposite rays to the side of the other angle. So here's angle one, and they're opposite rays to the side of the other. See the opposite rays right there? And these are opposite rays. So this is a ray going that way, this is a ray going that way, and you can see, everyone can say they're vertical angles. So let's go up and talk about the first theorem that we're going to do about vertical angles. It, the, the, it's theorem 2-3 says vertical angles are congruent. Really important theorem. Write this in your theorem area. So we're going to prove this theorem. A lot of the theorems we're going to try to prove. So here we go. It's given that angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. So they're giving us that. And we are going to prove that angle 1 equals angle 2. We could write angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles and then write given. But we're just going to skip up to the point where, in the book they do this, that angle 1 and 3 equal 180. And angle 2, they added this 3 in here, by the way. And angle 2 and 3 add up to 180 because they lie on the same line. And that's called the angle addition postulate. We know that if they two angles share a common side, that they, they um, and lie on a line, that they add up their supplements and they add up to 180. All right, so that's just looking at the diagram. We can see that angle measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 3 equal 180. The measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 3, we can add up two angles, and it gives us the bigger angle. And this is a straight angle, so it adds up to 180 degrees. All right, keep in mind, we eventually want to get rid of these 3s again. So since these are both equal to 180, these are equal, then these are going to be equal. So I can write measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And this is just going to be substitution. We're just going to substitute this in for this 180 because it's equal to 180 so it equals uh, that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we can say measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 3, and that's your reflexive property. And then finally, we can subtract angle 3 from both sides, and so if we subtract it from both sides, we're going to get the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. And we can switch from measurement to congruence just by saying angle 1 is congruent to angle 2.
And just to remember, when you're talking about measure, you're talking about actual degrees. When you're talking about congruence, we're talking about shapes. You can put this angle on top of that angle and they're going to match up perfectly. So let's do another example. In, in the diagram, should be in the diagram, angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. Name two other angles congruent to angle 5. So angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. We also know because of vertical angles that 4 is congruent to 7. Um, so that doesn't help us too much. Um, kind of does. And we know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 8 because they're vertical angles. So what are two angles congruent to angle 5? Well, we're going to have angle 7 and angle 8. And the way we get 7 is because it's a transitive property. 5 is congruent to 4 and 5 is congruent to 7, so 4 is congruent to 7. And that's the problems aren't that hard, but we're going to look at a couple from your book. Um, this is from the written exercises. Number 20, it says, find the value of x. Well, these are pretty easy. These are vertical angles. You know that vertical angles, according to the theorem, are congruent. So if they're congruent, we can set their measures equal to each other. So we can say 3x plus 8 equals 6x minus 22. We can subtract 3x from both sides. So, so I'll just do that. I don't know where you guys are in your algebra. So we get 8 equals 3x minus 22. And then I'm going to add 22 to both sides. And we get 30 is equal to 3x. x equals 10. And that's what you're supposed to find is x. So we did that. Okay, the next one we're going to try is number 26. Um, they tell us that angle C and D are complementary, and they tell us what C and D are in terms of Y. So if they're complementary, that means that they add up to 90 degrees. If it said they're supplementary, you would set it equal to 180 degrees. So we get 3Y plus 5 equals 90, and we get 3Y equals, whoops, let me go back and do that again because I didn't add it correctly. 3y and 2y is 5y and then I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides and we get equals 85. And if we divide that, if we divide 85 by 5, we get 17. So y equals 17. Pretty straightforward problems. And the hardest one, this is getting into our section B problems. Um, it will say the measure of a supplement is 12 more than twice the measure of the angle. Find the angle in its supplement. So always set the headings up the same way and you'll get these right. First you say x equals the angle. We didn't hear them mention complement at all, so we don't worry about it. So our supplement is 180 minus x is your supplement. You read along with the words of the problem. The measure of the supplement, so that's 180, that's right here, minus x is 12 more than twice the measure of the angle, which is just x, and you always put that on the end. And then we just solve that. So I'm going to add x to both sides, and we get 180 equals 3x plus 12, Take 180 and subtract 12 from it, and we get 168 equals 3x, divide by 3, and we get x equals 56. They also want to know the supplement, so to find the supplement, we take that right up there, and so we get 180 minus 56, and we get 124. And that's your answer. Um, I'm just turning the page in the book, and I think we'll try number, number 32 real quick. So we have two lines that are intersecting. Here's a line, and here's a line. And we get 
they intersect and we have, this is x degrees, this is 3x minus 8 degrees, we have 2y minus 17 degrees, and they want us to find the value of x and y for each one. So what you would do here is, you know the vertical angles are congruent, but this one has a y and this one has an x, so it wouldn't really help to set them equal to each other. But we know that this one and this one are supplements. So we can add those together, x plus 3x minus 8, since their supplements are going to add up to 180. So we get 4x, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Oop. And we get 188. 188 divided by 4 is x equals 47. Then we can figure out um, this angle right here. This angle right here. If this is 47, then that angle that I circled is going to be 180 minus 47. So this angle is going to be 133 degrees. We can use this number to get this because they're vertical angles. We know that vertical angles are congruent. So we know that this angle is congruent to this angle. So we can set them equal. So we can say 2y minus 17 equals 133. 2y equals 130 plus 17 which is 147. Yikes, it's going to be a fraction. I'll say did something wrong and we're going to divide it by 2 and we're going to get y equals 73.5. And you don't put degrees on there because we're solving for x and y so we don't need degrees. So that is it for lesson 2-4.